Hi everyone, welcome back Cooking with the Chosen One. Today we are cooking on Sunday. Here is my husband. Hello. Yes. And today we're going to be talking about our life is short and making the best out of it while you're here and doing everything you can to do what God put you here to do or doing everything you can to do what you feel like you were put here to do and making the best out of your talents that you were given. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You know how we do on Sundays or you know how we do if it ain't a Sunday and we're doing cooking. You already know in the morning we come with the breakfast. Uh-huh. You know. Got the pancakes. We got the eggs here. We have the cheese. Okay. Yep. And we also have bacon we also have hash browns so we're gonna go ahead and get started on breakfast and we're gonna start talking to you you already know my wife and how she do so let's go ahead and get started you like to go first babe and talk to the people no you go first you want me to go first? okay look so good morning everyone so let's talk about life what is life Life is something that's very precious that we're giving. Everybody looks at life like as if it's something that we live day to day, which is very factual. But actually what people don't realize and the reason why a lot of people go through some things in life and a lot of us, and when I say people, I mean us, okay, go through things in life is because we don't see life for what it really is. But the truth of the matter is, everyone, life is a gift, okay? It's a gift. And it's a blessing because we were put here on earth, okay? Every day of the year, there's a different way that kids are made. We all know how we're made. We all know how we were put here. But we were given to our parents through God, right? But there's a but we are the specific ones that were chosen to be here, okay? Every day that you go through life from childhood and you continue on through life is a blessing. Okay, because life is something that you can have today and God can take tomorrow. Okay, this is why you should look at life like it's a blessing, because if you appreciate your life, you do what you can to stay here longer. Okay, if you don't appreciate your life, then you do things without thinking about how it's going to impact your life and how your clock can end, okay? We all have a day when we're going to leave this earth. We have a time from the day that we're born, the day we come out the womb or we come out through the chest, through the stomach, in the C-section or whatever. Shout out to all the mothers who, who, who go through the day-to-day -day struggle every day to give birth and bring children into the world. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are wonderful. Shout out to you too. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a wonderful son. Yes. You know, blessing me, stepdaughter. And shout out to Shout out to all My mother's kids for bringing my kids Into the world as well and all you mothers Out there you know who Have gone through the miraculous Miraculous That's why I'm going to use the word miraculous today Okay you went through the miraculous Struggles Of bringing children into the world For us to raise Okay But back to the topic of what I was speaking about Y'all know how I do like I said, from the time that you're born from your mother, from the mother, all the way until the time you leave, from the time you're born, God already knew when your clock was going to stop. But did God say that your clock had to end? No, he didn't. Does God know when your clock going to end? Yes, he does. But if you do what you can to extend your clock, God works with you. See, that's what people don't realize. That's why I said you have to take life serious. You can't take it for a joke, okay? Now, I'm not perfect, okay, y'all? I'm not, okay? I lived my life in the fast lane at one point, okay? I had to go through some serious, serious, serious life-altering situations for me to wake up and become a better person. Let's talk about that. At one point in time, for those who've been rocking with me and my wife back when we were just 
you know, boyfriend and girlfriend all the way to engagement on these cooking with the chosen one episodes and the and the vlogs that we've done and uh the, 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 the conversations that we've had about our relationship, y'all know about me already, all right? But for those who don't, let me tell you a little short story, something simple, right? I started off in the streets, you know. I was out here, you know, um getting in trouble. Can you get that, um, can you get this, this the uh okay. butter from me down there, babe? Thank you, babe. I was out here getting in trouble, hustling, you know, um, every day, every day on the block, you know, getting into fist fights, shootouts, all kind of things. And I lived my life like that since I was young. I spent almost 15 to 18 years in the street life, okay? I gave the streets 18 years of my life, okay? And I had no plans of slowing down. When I say I lived my life in the fast lane, my motto was always live fast and die young, okay? I was living so fast that at one point in time, <laughs> Believe it or not, my family was trying to talk to me about an insurance, possible insurance policy on my life. And I'm talking about at a young age. You know what I'm saying? It was that crazy, you know? And, it's, and you know me. Y'all know me. I give it to y'all real, real, straight real. I don't cut no cards or nothing when I talk to y'all. Keep it a thousand, keep it a stack, keep it a million with y'all. But anyway, yeah, I was living my life so fast at one point at a young age that that's what happened with my family. They were scared for me like that, you know? But um, throughout the years... I didn't even think I was going to see 20. I had kids at a young age. You know, uh, I got arrested at a young age. It's, 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 it's a lot to the story. But the point of the matter, what I'm trying to tell y'all is, I didn't plan on slowing down. I was I, When it came down to money, see, this is the thing about the streets. People think that the streets, you know, is so glamorous. It's not. Like, just because we had the money, just because you see the people with the money sometimes, just because you see them with the car, the women, and all that, it come at a price. There's only two ways out that life. It's life or death. Long story short, what I'm trying to tell y'all is I lived fast and I was willing to die young. I was I was spending money like crazy. I was going in the mall every day. I I make a certain amount of money. I was going in the mall spending money when I had money, you know, from doing what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, if I wasn't spending money on that, spending on food or helping my mom out sometimes with some money, you know, buying clothes, buying things that didn't matter, doing things with my money that didn't matter because I didn't think I was going to live. So throughout the years, as I got older, Still in the streets getting in trouble, right? And then it just so happened, like, my mother kept praying for me. I was taking my mother through a lot. My mother was going through it, you know? And um, I didn't take, like, relationships seriously. You know, I hurt a lot of people. You know, I hurt a lot of women. You know, I didn't take, I didn't think that love was for me. You know, and um, it wasn't right what I did. I don't think what I did was right. And I apologize to the women that I hurt, you know, but at the end of the day, it was me. You know, I didn't have my mind right. It took me a while to get my mind right. You know, even when I was with her, you know, when we got together, no, I wasn't perfect. I didn't cheat on her or nothing like that. But the things that I was doing and how I was moving, I was out here still flirting. You know what I'm saying? And then um, how I was moving in the streets was hurting her. Taking her through what I was going through every day, you know. But um, anyway, as I got older, I still was living right and wrong. I was taking my family through a lot. My family worried about me. My mama worried about me. And it's like every time I'm telling God, I'm like, God, you know, save me. You know, get me through the next day. Do this and do that. Okay. God, I'm getting in situations. I'm getting into these shootouts. I'm getting into these fist fights. God is sitting there with me, helping me to survive and see another day. I'm able to go home to my kids. I'm able to do these things. But I'm also seeing God's also giving me these warnings like, hey, man, slow down, slow down. You see, let me give you all an example. It's like a stove, right? You see how you got the stove right here? Okay. It's like if you touch the stove, you know that the stove is hot. You touch it, you test it if you're a kid. It's like a kid touching the stove. You touch the stove. You know, you know when you touch the stove, you test it. It's, you touch it, you like, ah, it's hot, right? But when you touch the stove, you know it's hot, right? But sometimes you want to play a truth for dead game when you're little or you're young, right? So when you're playing the truth for dead game, you still want to go and touch the stove. So again, you get burnt. Ah, it's hot. Okay? Now I'm giving y'all an example of how, how it was for my situation. This is what I mean by when God was giving me warnings. So I'm still, you know we got kids, so y'all know how we do for those who've been rocking with us. So, you know, I'm still touching the stove. It's still hot. Okay, but then as I'm living fast and I'm touching this stove while it's hot, God is giving me more warnings, but I'm not slowing down, right? 
So God said, okay, you take your mother through this. You say you want out this life, but you want to keep living this life. So it's obvious, son, that you want to come home with me, right? Or maybe you're just not taking this serious. So maybe I need to really wake you up, right? Because I'm still touching stuff. I'm still going, ah, every day. I'm out in the streets every day. I'm doing this, doing that. Hanging out, spending time with my kids from time to time, but barely seeing my kids hanging in the streets. I'm still, ah, you know what I'm saying? So at some point in time, God said, okay, son, I'm going to sit you down. You want to touch the stove and you know it's hot? It's time for you to burn your hand. So I ah, finally burnt my hand, okay? Now, what do I mean by I finally burnt my hand for those? Let me I'm just make sure that y'all rocking with me, y'all following me, okay? For those who ain't following me, just let me know. But um, what I mean by this is God sat me down. I finally got burnt because out of nowhere, y'all, I started getting sick, okay? I started getting sick. I was getting so sick, my health was breaking down that my own brother, my big brother, I love my brother. I mean, I said my big brother, I'm sorry. Little big brother, y'all. Y'all know how my memory is, you know, from those who've been rocking with me from when I had surgery. But uh, my my brother, my younger brother, not gonna say his name, but my younger brother, I love him to death for what he did for me. I got sick. My brother took care of me for three months, okay? I had to sit on the couch for three months because I could barely get up. I showered, yes, but he had to help me sometimes get to the bathroom. Or had to watch me go to the bathroom. Check up on me. But I could barely even stay in my own bed because my body hurt so bad. I had to lay on a couch in the living room. That's how I lived my life for three months, y'all. Then, on my birthday of last year, right, I ended up in the hospital on my birthday. And find out on my birthday that my body is slowly breaking down. What was going on at the time was I had a pulmonary issue and it affected the it affected the blood flow in my lungs. And my lungs had shut down and stopped pumping blood properly. So not even within, that, this is on my birthday that I found this out that I got admitted to the hospital. I didn't even get to enjoy my mm -hmm. birthday, okay? And then, right after I got admitted into the hospital, not even within two weeks after that, of being admitted into the hospital, I found out I only had five months to live. So, when I say that God will sit you down, he will really sit you down. Because when I found out I had five months to live, that was God saying, see, son, I told you that if you took what I was saying, my warnings for a joke, that was going to wake you up. He woke me up. He he took. He was basically ready to call me home. I was playing around, wasn't taking life serious, doing things my way, not not not, not using the talents that I was given, you know, because I do have gifts, and I know I do. Yes, music is my number one priority, but I know that I'm good at speaking. I know that I'm good at poetry. I'm good at so many other things. There's so much in life. I'm a good husband. Look, I married the woman who I want to be with. I married my wife. Okay, you know, I'm a, I'm a good husband. I do the best I can as a husband. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. I'm not about to sit on this camera and act like we're perfect because we're not. But we get through things, okay? That's what marriage is all about. Anyway, not the point. As I was saying, I, God has given me many gifts, but I was taking it for a joke. Running around. Can you give me a, 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 a plate from Nanny Bay, please? I'm running around in the streets doing what I was doing. So God said, I told you I was going to sit you down. And I'm sitting there in the hospital. Five months to live. They told me that if I couldn't find an organ donor, Okay, and get a surgery. Which I would have to go on a waiting list, of course. For those who don't know about um, surgeries and how organ donations work, you have to go on a waiting list. And um, with me having five months to live, sometimes that's really mighty hard to find an organ donor that, that fits you because you have to find somebody whose organs can fit you, right? And based on your blood types and all that, you got to go through a lot of testing and stuff. But, you know... Um, if you don't, sometimes it's hard to find it in five months. I had five months to live, and they say that if you if you if you uh, couldn't find one, we're gonna have to put you by the by the third month. We're gonna have to put you in a hospital in, in in a transitional home. For those who don't know what a transitional home is, follow me, walk with me, okay? A transitional home is basically where they where they put you at. It's like a nursing home, right? But it's for like young and older people, right? It's for all ages, basically, right? And it's where they put you in a home where they make you comfortable. You know, you can come out, play games, do all that. 
spend time with other people who's going through the same situation you're going through. But it's a place that they make you comfortable with at until and your family can come visit you and all that. And they try to your family comes to see you and spend as much time with you as they can until you can comfortably transition over, okay? And which means basically until you pass away. Okay? They try to make your last minutes and years, months on this earth, or years on this earth as comfortable as possible before you train before you pass away, okay? But God said. I did warn you, son. Okay? And I had to sit down and think. See, see, when I was in the hospital during this time of me having five months to live, and it's sad. Because this is my point I'm getting at with y'all. It's sad because it took me having that happen to me for me to wake up and think like, dang. I got I to gotta do better with my life. I told God I was going to do better. I owe that to myself. I owe that to God. I owe that to my children. I owe that to my mother. Because those who know me and my wife's story know at the time we wasn't, you know, engaged or talking during this time, for those who don't know. But um, <clears throat> at this time, I'm thinking like, you know, I, gotta, I, I, I owe it to them to do better. But look, it took me getting sick to want to do better. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm getting at with y'all is, after that... I was in the hospital for a few more months. Um, uh, eventually, thank God. Thank hey, you. Watch that out for me real quick so we can do the next thing. Thank you. Uh, thank God, I was able to get the heart and lung transplant surgery that I needed in time to save my life. But before I woke up, before I even completed my surgery, I had did my surgery, right? And, and um, I ended up. And, I, and some of y'all know the story, but I'm going to make this story short for those who don't. End up in the transitional world. I saw a lot of things. In the transitional world, for those who don't know, follow me. Let me make sure that y'all follow me, right? Let me know if I'm moving too fast for y'all in the comments or anything. And uh, I do my best to, to double back. This ain't, are we live or are we, or we doing a video? It's a regular video. Okay, we're doing a regular video. So let me know in the comments if, uh, if y'all not following with me. And um, I'll double back with y'all. get back to y'all in the comments or... Or I'll reach out to y'all by email, however you want to do it. But um, look, what I'm saying is the transitional world is like a pit stop. It's like going on a highway. Y'all know how we got truck stops on the highway? You got you got, you got got your little rest stop where you can stop and rest or, or get some snacks or whatever. That's how it is. It's like a pit stop between heaven and hell, okay? It's like you're, you're, you're dying and you're kind of you're gone, but you're not gone. You haven't fully transitioned. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 got, you got hell over here. And you got heaven over here. You're in between both. You might go, you might see a little bit of heaven. Somebody that you love might be there. That you might, they might come see you or you might go see them. Or you might end up in hell. Temporarily. You know what I'm saying? But key word, it's temporary. Because you don't know yet if you're fully transitioning. That determination is made later. I had to fight to live down there, okay? I'm not going to get into a long story about my experience there. That, that's for another time. But just know I fought to live there. I fought to live down there every day. And that humbled me when I came back to life, okay? I earned my right to live. Because they wanted me to transition, okay? When I say they, I'm not going to say who. God had other plans for me, though, okay? Because at the end of the day, this, this little light opened up in the ceiling. And I started hearing my mother talking to me, different people were coming to visit. And that took a while. You know what I'm saying? And to come and find out, I was actually down there for two weeks. That's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Two weeks down there, you know? But the, problem, the point I'm trying to make to y'all is coming out of that in the end of the day, and this is basically what I'm getting at about the whole subject, right? Coming out of that at the end of the day made me appreciate life. God had to sit me down because I did not take life serious. He woke me up. So that I can get my life together, become a better person, find my way back, and become a better father to my children. I'm still not perfect when it comes down to my kids, but I do what I can. Since I have the time, I do what I can. I try to make time for my kids the best I can. Okay? I have a wonderful wife. Like I said, we're not perfect. We go through ups and downs, but I love my wife. Okay? On top of me having that. I'm able to do, I do the things I love and I don't waste time no more. I'm not in the streets getting in trouble. I'm not out here messing around with guns. I'm not out here 
doing anything that I'm not supposed to be doing. I'm not messing around with women. I'm not doing none of that. I go home. I work on my music. I do poetry. You know what I'm saying? And I do other things that I love to do. And I'm still trying to set goals to try to determine what else it is that God wants me to do out of life. Basically, I'm not wasting time no more in my life. I'm doing what God wanted me to do and that's stay focused and figure it out until he gives me the answer. So I'm not taking my life for granted. I love my life. Every day that I wake up, I make the best out of my life. My next day, I take my next day and I make, I make the best out of it, right? So what I'm saying is, you only get one life to live. So what you only have in one life to live, you got to make the best out of it while you're here. Whatever your talents are and you know that you're good at, make do it. It don't matter if you're good at finances. Be the best financial advisor you can be. If you're a sports agent, be the best booking agent you can be. Okay? If you're a cook, be the best chef you can be. Okay? If you're a mom every day doing day-to-day -day mother work and that is your job and that's, the, that's what you can do in life is raising your kids and that's what God put you in to do, be the best mom that you can be. Okay, if, 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 if you're an um, electrician, be the best electrician. Whatever your talents are that you was given, the gift that you was given, that you do every day, wake up and be the best at it. Love your partner. When you're going home, love the person you're going home to every day. Because you never know when you're going, you never know when God says it's time to close your eyes. You don't want to take, the, you don't want to take that time for granted. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to sit there and be like, oh, I didn't get to, I, I should have loved my partner more. I should have did this. I should have did that. I should have did this. I should have did that. Babe, give me a bottle of water, please. You know, you don't want to do that. So don't take nothing for granted. The time you have with your kids, cherish the time you have with your kids. For those of my, for those of y'all who I'm talking to, I know that we, that my wife has audiences of different types. I see some of y'all used to be in the streets. Some of y'all still in the streets. I see some of y'all are mothers day to day. I see some of y'all are, um, Hard, hard working people, you know, but for the, I'm going to speak to those who are in the streets right now. For those of y'all who, who follows my wife that are still in the streets or used to be in the streets, let me tell y'all because I've been in. Find another way. That's not it. And we both know that when you live in that life, <laughs> I'm making my famous cinnamon pancakes, okay? Cinnamon, right? <laughs> Y'all yeah, gotta try this. It's, it's, it's amazing. But um, for those of y'all that's in the streets, man, it's 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 it's, it's you know there's only one there's only two ways out of that. You know, it's only dead and he either died and go to the grave, or you go to jail for a long time. It's not worth it. That hurt that you're gonna see in your kids' faces ain't worth it. That hurt that you're gonna see in your mother's face ain't worth it. That hurt that you're gonna see in your uh partner face. Your wife or your girlfriend, whoever, it's not worth it. Get out while you can. Focus on something else. Figure out what you're good at and do something else. We all have talents. We all have purposes. Use it. Utilize it. You know, for those of you women who follow my wife that are out here living fast, and you know what I mean by living fast. I'm not going to go into details, but for those of y'all women who follow my wife that's out here living fast, make the best out your life. Do something else. There's other ways. Do what you, I'm not I'm not saying that you ain't got to do what you got to do. We all got bills to pay. But have a backup plan. Get out of that. Figure out, like I said, you only get but certain warnings with the stove before it gets too hot. But when your stove gets too hot, well, you had the chance to come back and figure out what you can do in life. That's what you have to ask yourself. Everybody don't get that chance. Some of us do and some of us don't. I was lucky enough to get that. Okay? Make the best out of your life while you can, no matter who you are. Love the people that you have in your life that care about you while you can. Show God that you're not wasting time and that you're utilizing your clock so that your clock can be extended. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you do, God will make sure that you can get through no matter what. Everybody ain't comfortable with praying, so sometimes they don't pray, okay? But still, just if you if you are a prayer type, just at least wake up and tell God, thank you. Say, God, I know that it seems like I'm not taking life serious, but I'm trying to figure it out. That's all you got to say. It ain't even got to be a prayer. Just talk to him and say that. But say, thank you for letting me breathe again another day and keep it moving. All right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for letting me rock out with y'all. But you know how we do. The chosen one. The chosen one. I love that one. Ooh, I love the chosen one. When I say that. You see how I say her name? The chosen one. I love it because she's chosen, right? It's about to speak to y'all. Thank you.
But let me rock out with y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to get back to cooking this breakfast. All right. Go ahead. Take over, bitch. I would say, you know, enjoy your life to the fullest because, you know, life is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. and, talk um, to him, baby. That's right. Talk to him. Talk and, to him. Um, you know. Ooh. Ooh. Did I? It's okay. Don't Take, continue. you know, enjoy your life to the fullest because so many things are going on, you know. Like recently, you know, I seen my aunt like a month ago. Next thing you know, she was gone. It's like you see somebody today, the next day they're gone. So, you know, appreciate your life. Take your life serious. Don't play with it, you know. Even if you messed up, get up, repent, and just say, Lord, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I know a lot of you, you don't want to tell God you're sorry, you messed up. It's okay. Mm -hmm. We all mess up in life. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. You Talk know, him, I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. You're not perfect. We all have a story. Mm -hmm. We all got a testimony. We all have trials, tribulations. We all was down. You know, you're going to be down in the season, but mm. God is going to lift you up. And when God pick you up in the season in your oh, life, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be blessed with financial. You're going to be blessed with homes, cars. God going to take you through things because at the end, you got a testimony. Everybody got a testimony. So your testimony mm -hmm. is to help somebody to not go through it and teach them, you know, what they shouldn't do. But let them know, you know, even when you're in church, you know, you may have... You know, grandmas, you know, older people, they tell you, baby, don't do what I did because, you know, I was a prostitute and I was a hoe, but don't do that lifestyle. And they will always tell you, don't do what they did because they teaching you that's not the way you want to go because you may not make it. So just, you know, you mess up, just tell God I'm sorry. It no just, matter what you, you know, want to. It doesn't matter what you what you go through. Just apologize to God. Only person you need to ask to is your father. That's it, which is God. I'm telling y'all, what she's saying is real. I'm telling y'all. Because at the end of the day, that's the only person you need to talk to. Because sometimes we talk to, you know, so many people on social media. Yes, mm -hmm. you get counselor, you get therapy, but you need to go to the Father. That's the only counselor you need. That's the only medication you need. That's the only provider you need. And that's the only person that's going to help you in everything that you're going through. And prayer is the key. You have to pray. If you're going through so much and you feel like you're getting ready to harm yourself, I, you know, you feel like you're getting ready to do something crazy, you need to fast. Fasting is the key, you know, if you need God in some areas. Fasting is the key. I would say fasting because, you know, God, he had fast 40 days. And some of you, you're going to have to fast. I mean, you're going to have to not eat. You can, you can do three days. You can do four days. You just fast and just say, Lord, you know, help me and restore me. And it's okay to, listen, it's okay to ask God to forgive you. It's okay. Don't feel like, you know, Lord, I messed up so bad and I feel like I can't do anything. I feel like you will never forgive me. I felt like that. You know, when I was young, I have I was a sinner. Like I tell everybody, I was a sinner, and I'm not afraid to tell nobody my story. I was a sinner for years. It took me a long time to change, but God has changed me, and He has used my story to bless other people. And as I have blessed other people, they have been, you know, they have been through a lot. And my story have blessed a lot of people to change their life around. That's why I get on here every day. I dedicate my time. I dedicate myself to y'all and let y'all know that you can change and you can do better. You know, and it's okay. Yes. So, you know... Just, to, just I take, tell her about the kids. Sorry, yeah, we talk about the kids. Yeah, so just take your time, and um, you know, like I said, just take your time.
-hmm. and just keep praying and talk to God mm -hmm. about the things that you um oy, that you need Him to do in your life, and God will help you in those areas. He restored you in those areas. Yes, He will. But just appreciate what you have in front of you before it's gone. Mm, I love that. Preach to him, babe. Talk to him. And just um and just one of the things that we don't do is mm -hmm. we tell people, I love you. That's important. You mm. know, before you leave your home, before you leave a loved one, I love you. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Mm. It's very important that you that you say that because you don't want the last thing to be I hate you. Get out of my face. I wish you was dead or something. Because if that's the last thing that you said, you will always feel like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I messed up. Why did I do that? So just always say, I love you. Always tell them that you love them because life is too short. And you want to appreciate, you want to appreciate what you have in front of you. And just like I said, wow, just I that. just just thank God. Thank God. Just thank Amen. God. Do it all because He got you. Amen. Okay. Yes. He got you. Yes, He does. And just Amen. like I said, fasting is the key. Fasting, fasting. A lot of people don't know, but fasting is the key. It's very, very. What? How can I say this? Fasting is. The quickest way. A lot of Christians should know what I'm talking about. Fasting is the is the quickest way to get healing from God. Like if you really down and you like, I don't know what to do, and you feel like you between life and death, and you feel like you really, really messed up. When I was a sinner, that was the thing that God told me to do. You need to fast. I fast three days, seven days, ten mm. days. Mm. I say fasting is the key. Sometimes we eat too much, and, and that's the problem. You know, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, fries. I love my hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and fries. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just La being honest. Lasagna and all this double feet, all this feeding and all of this stuff. And then we complaining about our weight later on. Right. But look here, y'all. <laughs> fasting is the key, but fasting ain't for everybody, okay? For those of y'all, because I know I can't, I'm a, you, you see me, right? Look, I mean, look at this belly, right? <laughs> you know, I eat good, right? So for those of y'all who can't fast, make sure you're very open about your prayers. You're very open, you're very honest with God about how you're feeling, okay? Because God hears you and he sees you, okay? He sees everything. So you don't want to be around telling God, oh, well, this, that, the third, but you're not taking it serious, okay? That's all I want, you know, that's all I want to let you know. I'm going to let my wife take over, y'all. Go ahead, baby. Yes, just just enjoy your life. You know, try to travel more with your family. Like, Disney World is one of the trips I want to do with my family. Um, and also... You know, traveling is the key to, to bring family together. It shouldn't always take a funeral. It should take, you know, vacation, trips, traveling, you know. Vacation is very important for family. You know, it's, it's time to get together. Not to argue, but get together with love, spending time with each other, talking about kind words, I love you. You know, it's thank you, God, mother. Thank you, mother, for the things. Thank you for the labor that you have done. It just, it's time to try. Some of y'all that's watching me, you need to get your passport. You need to update your information and go ahead and travel. Enjoy your life. Go ahead and put your baby suit on and go on out there and enjoy yourself. You know? Uh -oh. Go ahead, honey. Go ahead. 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 Go Lead the fathers the responsibility and lead them to be a single father, just like some fathers lead the women to be single mothers. But I already shout out the mothers, but I didn't give a shout out to those men who every day waking up and doing the parenting thing themselves. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I want to give y'all men credit because I know it's hard out here. You know what I'm saying? And every day is getting harder and harder to survive and get back. So shout out to shout out to those single fathers who take who day and day 
Are with their children, spending time with their children, doing this job 24 7. Because I know y'all was y'all single fathers who watch it is gonna get me like, what about us? And you know what? You know what I'm saying? Hey, conscious, you ain't looking out for the men, you know? Y'all know I don't pick sides, man. So shout out to y'all that's doing that every day. I salute y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because I know it ain't hard. I'm a father, but I'm not a single father. That's why I give respect to, I give a shout out, you know what I'm saying? That's why I shout out my baby mothers at the beginning, you know what I'm saying? I shout out my wife for bringing my son into the world because I know it is not easy being a parent. But if you're a mother and a father working together, whether you're a mother doing it on your own, or rather you're a single father, either way, it's not easy. So shout out to everybody, okay? Also, what I want to say this is, based on what my wife was saying is, um, don't wait until your clock is up to cherish life. Don't wait until your clock is up to cherish the ones you love. I just lost five people in three weeks, okay? Mostly to the streets, okay? And I'm still losing people. Those who not been rocking with me for a while, y'all know. I done told y'all, I got shoeboxes full of obituaries from homies I've lost to the streets. I could have been a number, but I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for that. I could have been on a shirt, but I would hate. I'm thankful for that. Okay? You know, I take it one day at a time, and I don't take it for granted. I don't take it the fact that I got to live. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for a joke. I cherish every day. I tell my wife every day I love her. I make sure I do it every, go through every day to show her that I love her. Like I said, I'm still, I'm still working my way as a father. I'm not perfect. I got other kids outside of being married to my wife. Okay? And to, for my kids, right? Let me wash my hands. Give me a second, y'all. And for my kids, you know what I'm saying, um, I make sure that every day I do what I can to show them that I love them, okay? I'm still learning. We're all learning as parents, no matter what. You go through day-to-day -day activities, you go through day-to-day -day life, you still learn as parents. We all are. But you make the best out of it while you can, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm doing the best I can for mine, okay? I love my kids. Don't wait until the last minute. My friend... Who, uh, my friend who just recently passed away, you know what I'm saying? Last time I saw him, we talked. And, um, he told me how he was glad that I lived through the surgery. He was worried because he was. He checked on me while he was, while I was in there, you know, a lot. And, um, he told me that, you know, he, that I'm strong and he was somebody that was used to used to keep me out of trouble when I was in the streets. I always see me on the corner, be like, "You need to go in the house. You need to do this. You need to do that." Or tell me like, "You gotta get out that life and move rough," you know. But um, that was the last conversation we shared of how proud he was of me and how you know uh, he was trying to get himself together. And we both were working on our lives and want to do better and we're going to be so great, you know. And not even it, not even. Y'all gotta bear with me for a second. Not even three, you know, not even two to three weeks later, he was gone. I found out he was gone, you know, and um, if I would have known that I had more time with him, that, didn't, that, that I could have had more time with him, if I would have known that I wouldn't have more time with him, you see, I said I could have, meaning that that day I would have, I could have stayed and enjoyed more time with him. I would have told him that I loved him one last time. I would have hugged him tighter when we separated, when I dapped him up and we embraced each other before I left. I would have hugged him tighter, way tighter than I hugged him. If I would have known that was my last time seeing him, but I didn't. You know, and it, and it's happened to me. A few times already to people that I, when it comes down to people that I care about and love, because I didn't take it, I didn't, I didn't cherish my last moments with them enough. So that's why I say that no matter, even if you only think that, even if you think you got more time with someone, still, even if you think you got months with them, years with them, still when you see them, hug them, tell them you love them. You know what I'm saying? Tell them, tell them that you're here for them. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know when that person clock going to be up. It can be tomorrow. You can see them today, they're gone tomorrow. It can be in a few months. You can see them now, they're gone, they gone in a few months. It can be a year. You see them now, they're gone in a year. Don't sit around and not appreciate the people that you have. Tell them that you love them. 
When cut out of your life, again, do not waste your life, okay? Love your spouse. Love your partner. If your boyfriend or girlfriend engaged, love your partner. Because when you go, gone, you're going to get a chance to redo and fix it again. Okay? Use the talents that you're given. Use what God put you here to do. Figure it out. If you don't know it, figure it out. There's always a way to figure it out. Sit down, strategize, and figure it out. Come up with a plan. It might take you three years to accomplish something. It might take you five. But the point of the matter is that God see you trying. He's going to help you to get there. He's going to give you that time frame to do it. But you have to show him that you're willing to do it. Okay? You know they say... God hands his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, right? I believe I'm saying that right. Babe, am I quoting that right? Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. You know, my, my wife knows the Bible more than me. I'm still learning the Bible, still getting used to prayer, still becoming more of a better person every day. Y'all know me who been rocking with me, so bear with me. But she said I'm quoting it right. God hands his strongest, his, his, his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers, okay? I want y'all to remember that. So don't become a victim of the weak. Don't let the devil trick you out your position. Because that's what the devil's good at. Tricking you out of your position. It's like, okay, let's say for example, you're starting to do better. You're getting off of drugs. You're doing this and doing that, right? Boom. The devil throws tricky situations out there. He tricks you. He sit there and give you stress, headaches, complications in your relationship, all kind of triggers that will cause you to go back to drugs. That's called a weakness. But God... Gave his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. You got to show the devil that he cannot get a hold of you. Show the devil that you're strong. Okay? And how do you do that? Is you overcome that. You say, no, devil. You're not going to get me. I'm not going back to doing drugs. I'm not going back to heroin. I'm not going back to meth. I'm not going back to smoking marijuana. I'm not going back to uh, constantly smoking cigarettes. I'm not going back to constantly drinking. That ruined my family. I would not let you make me ruin my family when we work hard to fix it. Because God said, I'm a soldier. And don't think I'm just saying that when I say soldier, don't think I'm just looking at referring like it, like I'm, like I'm speaking to just, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm just speaking to the men. Like, because women are soldiers too. Every day that y'all wake up, the things that y'all face on a day-to-day -day basis make you strong. Y'all got to step out the door and worry about men always, you know, grabbing your arm. Like, hey, come here, beautiful, blah, blah, blah. So you tell them you in a relationship, they being aggressive. You got to worry about, you know, possibly being kidnapped, raped, you know what I'm saying, molested and all that. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot that y'all go through, just like men. Y'all give birth every day. It's a lot of challenges that y'all face when y'all step out the door. Jobs are hard to get, you know, because this is a sexist world. They Men feel like it's a male-dominated world and women don't belong, doing blah, 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 blah. So every day y'all got to feel like y'all got to prove yourself, you know what I'm saying? So women are soldiers too, okay? Every day in life, we're all soldiers, but we're God's soldiers. We're put here to do something, okay? You do what you're put here to do, all right? God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. Remember that. Don't become a victim of weakness. Don't let the devil trick you out your position. To my men, no matter what it's about. Don't let the devil trick you out your position. Stay focused. Move forward. Because you only get one life. Use the talents that you were given while you're here. Don't take it for granted. Okay? Every day, my son, right here, all my kids, I talk to them about what they want to do. My other son, my daughters, I talk to all my kids every all the time when I get a chance about what they want to do in life. And I tell them, follow what you want to do in life. My son, he told me what he want to do with his life. And I always sit there and try to help him to learn the things he need to learn. So when he get older, he already able to move forward and do those things in life. Okay? Us as men, as fathers, we have to guide our children. We have to guide the youth. We are, because we they are the next generation. They are the next part of life, okay? So you want to do what you can to guide the youth, okay? Don't take life for granted, y'all. Appreciate life while you're here because tomorrow ain't promised. 
It's not promised to any of us. And we don't want to wait until our clock is up. You understand? So, um, like I see, in the day, love the people that you got while you're here. Love them. Love yourself while you're here. Because well, you can't love nobody else. Not a friend. Not a family member. You know what I'm saying? Not an uncle. Not, well, that is a family member. Not your partner. You can't even love God if you don't love yourself. So, love. make sure that you have that self-love as well. Okay? So, you know, I appreciate y'all rocking with me. I'm, I'm still getting breakfast done. It's about to be finished. I appreciate y'all rocking with me. I love y'all. I thank y'all for welcoming me into y'all life like always. I'm going to let my wife talk to y'all one last time. You know, say anything else that she has to say to y'all, her followers. And um, we're getting ready to go ahead. Cook the re last part is breakfast, which is the bacon. And I'm going to rock out with my family. But I thank y'all for letting me into y'all life. You know how I do. Conscious, you know. Like, I appreciate y'all. Y'all don't have to embrace me, but... Because this is my wife's channel, but every time I come on here, y'all embrace me. Y'all welcome me into your hearts. Y'all talk to me on the comments, and I appreciate y'all. Like I said. Like I said, y'all that's, that's women. Y'all know women, man. Y'all, Those of y'all who marry, y'all know how women are. You know, I'm gonna let y'all, you know, let her talk to y'all. But like I said, y'all rock with me in the comments. If y'all didn't, if some of y'all was lost or I lost y'all, make sure y'all hit me in the comments. Let me know. And you know, I'm gonna get back to y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yes, I just want to say, you know, be thankful for life. And um, just be thankful for life. And just take your life serious. And just, um, just, just be grateful, you know. Sometimes write it down, you know. I'm, I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for health. I'm grateful for strength because it's important. Because it's, it's important to be grateful. Yep. Because talk to him. It's just, it's just important. And just start thanking God for, for the things that you have: your family, your friends, your associates, you know, your job, whatever you have. Just be, just be grateful, and just um, thank God because it's it's life. Life is precious. It can be up, down, but it's all about how you make your life. You know, if you look at it, it's all about how you make your life. You gotta really appreciate it. You know, some people they wake up, they go to the bathroom, they go back to sleep. They don't have a plan. You gotta have a plan. You gotta have a vision, and ask God. What am I here for? What is my purpose? What is my dream? What is my goals? What do you have for me? Like, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. And you just sit down or you look in that mirror and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? You know, you look at yourself and you figure out the things, the changes that you want to make. And you can make those yes, changes sir. happen just by believing and knowing that God can um, help you with those areas that you're struggling with. Because whatever you're struggling with, God can turn it around and, and work it out for your good. Because, you know, he loves you. So just continue to stay focused and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you want to be thankful. You want to be grateful for life. Because life, your life matters. Remember, you are important. If you don't take your life serious, guess what? You gonna always have that mindset of I don't care, and um, thanks. Of I don't care, and um, you just wanna be. You wanna have a vision with yourself. Always have a vision. You see God, when He died on the cross, He shed His blood for us. He forgave our sins. You know, if it wasn't for Him, where would we be? Nowhere. We wouldn't be exist. We wouldn't be here. So Talk thank God, you him. know, so when, you know, when you walk around and you see somebody, hey, how you doing? Hi, they say hi, just say, wave your hand back. You don't know why people say hi to you, why they speak to you, because maybe they see a miracle, they see something on your life that mm -hmm. they want, 
Talk you know, to that's me. why people talk to you. You don't know why the, the reason why people live it. People live sometimes because they see you. It's something about your conversation. It's something about you're doing something. You change. And they're like, wow, I want to be like you. Thanks. Or you're a perfect example in my life. Or that's why they go on to church. You know, you don't know why people change their life. They go Thanks. to church and everything. Angels come in many shapes and forms, y'all. We don't know an angel when we see one. Angels come in human form, too. Believe that. God sends people back to earth in different shapes and forms. You never know who you're going to see. Just saying. Yep, they can tell you something that your grandma told you years ago. And you look at that person and you're like, what did you just say? Because I'm telling you, it can be the smell. Sometimes it can be the smell. It can be what people say out their mouth to you. And you're like, I remember my grandma used to say that. Like one time, you know, it just, just start thanking God for everything. Just sit down one day and just say, Lord, I'm just thankful for my family. Mm -hmm. My friends, write it down, write it down, and put it on your refrigerator. Put, write it down, put it on your mirror, and just say it every day what you're thankful for, what you're grateful for, and just don't worry about money, don't worry about what you don't have, because what you what you worried about, what you don't have, that's gonna affect you from growing with God and growing to your destiny. So just be thankful for what you have right now, because what mm. right now is what matters, not right what you don't have. It's gonna come. The miracles, the dreams, the visions, all of that stuff will come. Mm -hmm. God will supply all your needs when you put him first. I love that, baby. Tell them that again. God will supply all your needs if you put him first. He sure will. Amen. So just keep praying. Prayer is the key. I will tell everybody. Prayer is the key. You know, like I said, one time, I'll say this again. When my father started to pray and I heard him praying, in the room one day, I just, my dad used to pray all the time when he was young. Like when I was a kid, he used to pray for us when we was young. And he used to pray, pray, pray. And I thought, you know, I wasn't praying like that when I was growing up. And he used to pray. And one day I heard my father crying and praying. I said, Lord, I got to take my prayer life serious. And I thought, taking my prayer life serious, I would read Bible verses on prayer. So if some of y'all struggling with prayer, read Bible verses on prayer. Jesus fasts for 40 days, and he tells you things come by prayer and what? Fasting. So you need to do that. Or you just, need to pray fast. Or just do the best you can. Do the best you can. Take it one day at a time. Everybody is not into that stuff, you know, and I understand that. Everybody don't know how to do it. Just try to do it. And make the best of it, even if it's 20 seconds. Just take it one day at a time and ask God for guidance as you go along with time and you'll get better and better at it and you'll start to embrace God more and more as you see things progress in your life okay yes and read um read Matthew 6 and 33 mm. it has says you know seek he first when you seek God first mm. you Tell know him, everything will first. everything mm. will be added so don't worry about the money don't worry about the house that you don't have just mm. be just be thankful for what you have right now like right. I was telling my husband how I'm not happy about what I'm living at. He said, you know, be thankful for where you at, you know, because I could have been out on the street, but I'm thankful for where I'm at. So just thank God for what you have and be grateful. And guess what? With, even with that, I told my wife, I said, I told my wife, I said, you know, don't worry about what we don't have. You know why? Because God will make sure that we have. We're blessed, okay? But... We go through day-to-day -day struggles just like everybody else. Don't look at us and think that, oh, they're so nice, got a wonderful family, beautiful this, beautiful that, beautiful life, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we struggle too. We're getting by the best we can. Like I said, I'm trying to stay on track. That's an everyday job for me, to stay out the streets. To not go back and have to do what I have to do. I have kids to provide for. A lot of kids. I have a lot of children, okay? And I have to provide for every last one of them, okay? And it's not an easy job, but I'm doing the best I can. Luckily for me, my wife works with me. I have uh, the mother, uh, her mother of my youngest, you know, my other son, you know, who works with me. I have a, 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 a another mother of my child who necessarily, yeah, just to say she's the mother of my child, but I'm making do and I take care of my kids. Let's put it that way, but... Luckily, you know, I do the best I can, but it's an everyday struggle for me not to go back to the streets and get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So don't look at me and my wife's life. 
I think that we all got it together 24 seven. So we don't, we take it one day at a time. But like I told my wife, I will as your husband, get you that house. Promise her a house and we're going to get that house. Watch what I tell y'all. One day y'all will come on this episode of Cooking with the Chosen One and we're gonna be like, hello, thank you for joining us. Welcome to our new house. <laughs> y'all not even gonna see us in the kitchen. Y'all won't see us giving y'all the toe as we're talking to y'all, you know? Yes. And my wife will have that, okay? She will get that house. We will get those cars, you know? And when I say get those cars, we're not trying to make it seem like we want the glamorous life, no. We just wanna be better in life, okay? Better in life than where we're at because we have children. We want to set. You want to put your. You want to put yourself in a position where you can raise your children in a better neighborhood than where you're raising your kids at. You do the best you can, but the, but it's the, the, like I told you in the beginning. It's not about staying stuck. It's about growing, growth. Okay. We want to grow. So my wife will have all those things, you know. And she always. And then when I get off track, my wife is, is the one who balances me and keeps me on track. You know what I'm saying? She always had me reading the Bible when I get lost. Have me praying to God and talking to God when I feel like I can't stay on track. You know what I'm saying? And me and my, me and my, me and my uh, younger kids' mother, you know what I'm saying, is is very close. We're cool. You know, she, you know, she gets along well with my wife. They get along. They're very good communicators. They talk, you know, often, and um, they get along too. But my uh, youngest kid's mother, shout out to her. You know what I'm saying? Cause she's a strong woman, right? You know, shout out to her. Um, her and my wife get along, and I'm glad they get along. Cause you have to get along for the children. Yeah. Don't have to be about y'all. Regardless what y'all want to do, it's the children that matter. Some of y'all that's on here watching, please take what I'm saying to heed. Stop holding them grudges. And being like, oh, well, back then it was about you to me, man. Or back then it was about, oh, you said this and you said that to me. And blah, 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 blah. No. No. Because you know why? When y'all do that, it affects the children. Because sometimes women can be petty okay and be egotistic like oh no you're not going to hang out with them to dinner oh no i take you to dinner oh no and then the husband will be like well what i was going to do is this that the third and with the kids no no it ain't going down like that but see when the women put that stuff to the side it's more it works better for the children it's called building a foundation and i'll tell you something that she told me and something that my youngest kid's mother told me it takes a village okay a village that's my youngest kid's mother they were saying. It takes a village and it does. And I thank my wife for, for being an amazing woman that she is. Being an amazing wife to me. Loving me, caring for me, keeping me out of trouble. Because I do have my days where that y'all don't see on camera, you know what I'm saying? I have my days where I be breaking down and crying. Real tears, you know what I'm saying? Hurt because of the people that I've lost to these streets. I'm still scarred from that. The things that I've done, she can tell y'all that I've had countless nightmares as if I'm reenacting it. You know what I'm saying? And she holds me. She wakes me up. Now, and now I have to be like, oh. You know what I'm saying? And realize I'm at home and not on the streets. You know, so I appreciate her for being a strong woman that she is. We go through our ups and downs. But like I told y'all, I love this woman. I love this woman. And I gave my life to this woman. Okay? She got my last name. Okay? And I plan to spend the rest of my life with her. No matter what. Yeah, we had our time where we was like, you know what? Man. But we figured it out. It took time, but we worked on it. Okay? Marriage is work. Every day that you wake up and go through what you go through is work. Marriage is work. Emerge and, and, and improvement and marriage comes progress. But anyway, let me get back on the topic. All I'm saying to y'all is that it's a day to day struggle. But I'm trying, okay? I'm really trying. Those of y'all that see me, give me credit. I'm trying to stay out the way, man. I'm really trying. Every day. My money ain't what it used to be. You know what I'm saying? Because of my situation, I can't get a job, but that's okay. I'm making it. I'm getting through. As long as my kids happy, as long as this woman's smiling, <laughs> I'm good, all right? I let my life off of that. You know why? Because I could have been gone. I wouldn't, how, how can I, how can I, how can I, how can I, Buy my kids stuff if I'm not here. How can I tell my wife I love her if I'm not here? How can I hug my children if I'm not here? How can I breathe this air if I'm not here? How can I cook this breakfast if I'm not here? See, that's why I don't take nothing for granted. Love your life while you're here. Make it count while you're here. When your time is up, it's up. It's up. When that clock is done, it's done. 
Thank you, y'all. I love y'all. It's time for me to go. It's time for my wife to go. We got children to tend to. We got a lot of things lined up for today. You know, um... Again, my name is Conscious. We have my wife who's coming in here soon. Oh, hey, Andrew. Hey. This is, uh, this is my son, Andrew. Andrew, say hi to the camera. Hi. You know, we have Anita, my stepdaughter. You know, and y'all already know my wife. Y'all know. I know. So, we thank y'all again for joining us. So, don't thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, sir. Let them out. Thank you for joining us. Have a nice day. We appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.